Hello, welcome into the Imperial College Business School's pre-enrollment webinar for the upcoming program, Private Equity, Financing, Investing, and Value Creation. You know, the beauty of a synchronous learning session and coming here today is that you really get to be the driver of your own learning experience and really understand how this program can fit for you. I'll just keep us moving forward and introduce you to our keynote faculty presenter. We're really excited to have him here today, Professor Mark Kitten. He's partner at Candesic Strategy Consultants, and I'd just like to welcome uh, Professor Kitten here to uh, introduce himself to our participants and just greet us briefly. Thank you, Jennifer. It's uh, my pleasure to, to meet uh, you today. Uh, as Jennifer said, I have uh, several hats. Uh, my uh, daily activity is as a strategy consultant, as a founder, co-founder of Candesic uh, in London. Uh, but uh, I also teach extensively at Imperial College and elsewhere uh, areas of private equity and other segments of corporate finance. I will uh, go back to what links me to private equity in a minute. Thank you so much, Professor Kitten, for sharing a, a teaser of your, your background and your specialties. Now, like uh, Professor Kitten was saying, he will get into a bit more of the nooks and of, of the program and, and his background as well. Uh, but... I'll give you all a background a little bit on what we have to expect in today's agenda. So in a few brief more moments, I'll give you a bit more information about Imperial College Business School. And then I'll pass over the spotlight to our program uh, uh, faculty, our keynote faculty presenter here, who'll give a bit more information about himself and then dive deep into a little bit more about what you'll learn in this program moving forward. Then I will take back the spotlight and briefly explain a little bit more about the learning experience, what to expect when taking this program and how you learn and engage and interact. And then a little bit more about what you earn upon completion that program certificate, and then how to apply and get started. But I'd love to extend a warm welcome from Imperial College uh, Business School. It's lovely to have you all here and welcome. And Imperial College Business School drives global business and social transformation through this key fusion of business technology and an entrepreneurial mindset. And it's really this fusion that sets it apart. And, and this thought leadership uh, through this fusion is sought by governments, policymakers, and global business leaders who often partner with Imperial College Business School on research projects. So you're getting that innovative thinking and insight added with the new technology to develop solutions to real world problems. And this is the key point here. It's about real world impact. So it's about benefiting businesses while improving society. And that's really key here as well. As with uh, Professor Kitten, you're learning from leaders in the industry who are taking that research excellence and long established capabilities to inform these programs and, and help you grow your career and your understanding. And so it's about creating and delivering remarkable learning experiences with that lasting positive impact. And as you can see here, there are world uh, top tier rankings here, and 14 Nobel Prize winners have graced the halls of Imperial College Business School. So you're in very good hands with uh, leaders in the industry. And with that, I'd love to welcome back uh, Professor Mark Kitten. Uh, he's, um, you know, we're really excited to be learning this program from him. We're so excited he's here. Thank you so much, Professor Kitten, and I will hand over the spotlight to you. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, I have said um, I combine different activities, which uh, give me a little bit more insight into the field of private equity. So at, as a partner at Candesic, um, I advise uh, private equity funds all over the world, uh, mostly across Europe and the UK, but uh, it's really global. And I work with them on their acquisitions and later on sometimes uh, portfolio work. Um, so I have personally worked on perhaps 150 to 200 transactions in, uh, with private equity funds in uh, uh, many areas. I teach uh, private equity at Imperial College, but also in other places um, in the US, in China, in Russia, in the Middle East. And uh, I'm also on the board of a few high growth companies that are or will be financed by uh, private equity uh, company. So as, as you see, those are, and I'm an investor, I should add to that in private equity. So that gives me various perspectives that I try to bring to the class um, in the form of case studies that I publish on the topic, in the form of more anecdotes, of course, but also bringing uh, clients and other people I know 
from the private equity world to talk to you. So in the and also benefiting obviously from uh, the experience of all these people I interact uh, with. I also leverage your own experience. Uh, most of you may not know that much about private equity. That's why you join us. But somehow you all have some exposure. Um, so it's a combination of all uh, those exposures to private equity coming from me, but also coming from you, uh, that makes our experience particularly rich. Thank you, Professor Kitten, for giving us a little bit of background. You're truly a, a leader in the industry and everyone here is you know, all in the same uh, space. They wanna learn more about private equity and, and kind of its future potentials. So we'll go through a little bit more about the key, um, the key takeaways here. So the key takeaways for this program, it's an 11 week private equity online program. So it's gonna provide uh, our participants here with a, a thorough understanding of the past, present and future of private equity, as well as the opportunities and risks it presents for investors and insights into recent developments in emerging markets. So you're really going to get an idea of both sides of the coin here for private equity, the opportunities, the risks, how to move forward through it. Uh, you're gonna look at case studies as well um, and, and where those emerging markets are and, and how to fit uh, the idea of you know, this future of private equity into those emerging markets so you can be ahead of the curve. And with that, I'd love to welcome back uh, Professor uh, Kitten. Maybe you'd like to touch a little bit more on the key takeaways here before going into the modules. I should insist on the fact that this uh, course is not a finance course, okay? So, uh, we will do quite a lot of finance, but it's a management course which uh, draws upon many disciplines, including strategy, including, uh, to an extent, operations. Uh, it really develops your management skills. Now, of course, the financial part is uh, the one that is sometimes the most visible one, also because it can be difficult for people who have no experience a prior experience to corporate finance. It helps to have prior exposure to corporate finance, but uh, through um, uh, a number of case studies and teamwork, you have the possibility, it's optional, yeah, but you have the possibility to develop your capabilities in that field, in particular with company valuation. Now, let's be very clear. This is not a company valuation course. Otherwise, it would be called company valuation. It's private equity, and we use the tools of company valuation uh, to the extent you choose. So you can just observe and see what it is about, or you can decide to practice yourself and you will find that you will need to put more hours if you have no prior exposure. It's a course where we look at private equity from all possible angles. So we look, of course, at the process, but we look at the technical aspects, including the financial one. We also look at it from the geographical perspective. It's a Western story initially, but it is spreading to the rest of the world. So we will discuss, uh, as Jennifer said, how private equity can be different in emerging markets, which is something that will be, of course, very interesting to many of you. Um, we will look also ultimately at the roles and the careers in private equity. Most of you are not going to become private equity fund managers. I mean, it's possible, but it's not very likely that you even want that. But most of you, if not all of you, are going to be or maybe are already exposed to the reality of the private equity world. Private equity represents a fast-growing part of the economy. I mean, the formal organized part of private equity. There has always been a huge private equity uh, universe that was not organized and that nobody would call that way with all the private firms looking for private financing uh, through non-conventional uh, channels. But what we're talking about here is the trillions and trillions of dollars that are channeled through professional uh, providers of finance, both equity and debt. So that's a world that is totally transforming the reality of the markets, both in developed and in developing uh, areas. So that's what we want to understand from uh, all perspective and you will come out of this course not exactly as an expert in valuing a private company for example and certainly not as an expert in uh, assessing the legal dimensions of it 
but as a manager who understands where the issues are, what is important to understand, um, and who you need to hire or monitor in the case you get involved in a private equity situation. And you will be, if you are not already, because you will be the manager of a, a business that will be carved out, or your family business will need growth capital, or you will go through a restructuring, uh, or you will be you acquiring other businesses repeatedly. So there are lots and lots of situations where I'm absolutely sure you will be exposed to private equity. We have organized uh, your work in 11 modules. The first one is an orientation without me. So you will be shown uh, what to do, how to use the platform, etc. We'll get also a chance to start interacting uh, with your classmates. And here, I really urge you, I mean, you are, it's fantastic to, 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 to deal with people coming from all over the world like you are. And each of those classes is like my executive MBA classes where online, global MBA, where I teach people on all continents of the world. It's not always easy in terms of time zone, but we all make a little bit of an effort. Uh, I had to teach in the middle of the night when I was in uh, California not long ago, uh, but that makes things exciting. And uh, we also, I also invite you to work in teams as much as possible. Okay, this is not compulsory. Uh, you are often busy executives. You organize your time the way you want. Most of what uh, you do uh, is uh, asynchronous uh, online, uh, but you are invited to work with other people, perhaps preferably in your own time zone, but not necessarily. Um, and uh, prior. Um, I mean, students in, in prior courses have always testified how much more they learned from working with someone else. Okay, so we'll facilitate that. The tutor will make sure that if you want to work with others, uh, you get to communicate with them. We'll create LinkedIn, uh, a LinkedIn group to help you communicate with each other beyond the, what, the communication on the learning platform that you have. So you have two different channels. Uh, the advantage of the LinkedIn one is that you can get more information about your peers. And also, we automatically send you into the bigger LinkedIn group of all the people who have attended this course before. So over time, it represents a pool of hundreds of people with whom you share something direct. So that's uh, the best alumni group that you can have, the people who have followed exactly that course, even though it might have been uh, in different periods. Uh, so I see the, the, the alumni of my private equity, equity classes. They uh, discuss a lot. They do business together. Some of them are even launching initiatives together, but they try to leverage what we have done in class to the maximum. And, and this is beautiful to see what is happening uh, beyond the class. So after the first module, the, our very first one uh, together, module two, we will segment. It's important to understand the segmentation of the world uh, of private equity. Uh, we will understand it from the perspective of value creation. Uh, we will see how it fits into the global corporate finance world. Um, once we have done that, we look at the industry itself. And the first thing to do is to have a quick look at the history to identify some interesting patterns, some interesting changes, what having the marking moments in uh, the history, uh, in the modern history of private equity, which goes back only uh, 50 years. Okay, it's very, very recent. So we will discuss the various stages of private equity investing. And in module four, we will dig into the reality of the value creation, looking at both opportunities and risks for the investor. So of course, we'll look at the performance and we'll try to understand what it means, okay? And obviously, of, of, often people talk about average performance, but we need to understand it more specifically for various situations and over time. Um, we will discuss what makes it an attractive asset class to all sorts of investors. We'll also discuss not just the performance, but the sustainability of the performance, which is extremely important in private equity, at least historically. And we will introduce, of course, another key element of uh, investment, which is uh, the diversification impact. Then we'll move to looking at the process. So from the very early stage of uh, 
well, actually creating a fund, deciding that you want to invest in private equity, identifying uh, the type of companies you want to invest in, then the companies themselves. And when you enter the process, what do we need to do? What are all uh, the strategic, financial, legal, and other considerations to take into account? Uh, the due diligence process, which is that investigation that every investor is expected to conduct, to assess that what they are buying is really what they think it is, or even better. Um, and that will lead us naturally to the module six, where we will discuss valuation. And we will introduce a very complex LBO analysis model, but no worry, you won't have to develop it. It's already developed. Even to someone, uh, an expert, it will still take a few weeks to develop. So it's uh, we'll just play with it. We'll fill it with numbers and see how it reacts and create the structure for the LBO transaction. So that will link well to all the context uh, of valuation. Um, and we will develop it further into elements of negotiation. Because at the end, valuing something 100 doesn't mean anything until you have transacted. And maybe the transaction will be at 50 or 200, thanks to the negotiation skills of the people involved. Then we'll move to uh, module seven, which is uh, very logically after the deal. And uh, how do we create value once we have uh, purchased the company? So we will examine uh, the holding of the company in the portfolio and how we uh, extract the value out of it until we exit. Because the private equity, the, the, the formal private equity industry is about entering and exiting. Then I will take a step back and uh, ask you to think about what has happened during the credit crisis. For many of you, this is already an old story. We are talking 2009, 2012, about, it started in 2008. Um, so it's a, it's a good 10 years ago, but it has been an incredibly important moment that has reshaped the private equity industry and uh, has forced practitioners to change a few things. Now, bad habits always come back. But we want to learn from the crisis and then think about the evolution of the industry. So in the last 10 years and uh, going forward, we will also discuss ethical considerations because when an industry becomes more mature, it is uh, much more visible and it also needs to be more careful. And ethics is an issue that we need to discuss. So that will nicely lead us to module nine with the future of private equity. Uh, where we will examine 13 trends that I have uh, identified and analyzed, uh, and more if you want, uh, because we want to make it a discussion whenever possible. We will have a few live sessions around case studies that we can use to an extent to continue the conversation that are pre-recorded. And then we move to module 10, which uh, will be uh, another uh, side uh, look at this time developing markets, so emerging and developing markets. They're not exactly the same thing, but we get more and more developing markets and see the fundamental differences uh, and how developing markets will become developed markets because this is the nature of the evolution of private equity. We'll finish module 11 with a review, a practical review of how funds are organized what are the jobs in funds and outside funds, and what are the career opportunities uh, within this industry or working with that industry? Okay, so we'll keep the debate relatively wide, but it's a fascinating place. It's also an area where you can really fulfill a lot of your ambitions, um, career-wise, financial, etc. So that's how we'll uh, finish uh, the uh, course. So. Thanks, that's, uh, that's it. I'm uh, so sorry, I uh, forgot to <laughs> clarify that we have, I have chosen for you a few case studies. Uh, some of them I have developed myself. Some of them have been written by other professors in business schools. Um, good case studies are those where we have normally a good 10 years of perspective. So it is normal that I would choose uh, case studies that are not things that have happened last year. It's not a good idea. Uh, it takes a long time to really understand what has really happened and how it has impacted the world or how it has been impacted by the world. 
cases that happen in various industries. My main area is healthcare. I'm careful, perhaps too much, uh, of not choosing cases in healthcare. Uh, at the end, I don't have a see. No, there's not a single one in healthcare here. Um, but happy to discuss healthcare with you. But we will look at all sorts of areas, uh, being distribution, uh, being uh, telecom, or we have uh, one that is industrial with Channel Fire. We have one uh, which is uh, media with EMI, etc. And Southern Cross is diversified for emerging markets. So a very diverse panel of uh, case studies. But frankly, frankly, the sector doesn't matter. Okay, if you're in oil and gas, you will still learn from a case study in automotive and vice versa. 80% uh, of the learning is sector agnostic. Uh, what we want is a diversity of situations. And that's uh, what we provide with all the cases. And I hope you will like them as much as the previous students have in the past. Um, Professor, are there any case studies on renewable energy? Are you going to be covering any on renewables? Uh, no, no, I must say uh, this is, again, it's sector agnostic. So there is no sector that is chosen for the sector itself. Each case is selected because it teaches something that is important in the context of private equity. Renewable energy um, is, is something very new for private equity. It's actually much more venture capital area. Uh, and it's something where uh, the, the big, the oil and gas industry are developing initiatives internally. But there is not yet, not yet, okay, that's changing, but it's not yet a lot of mid-sized uh, assets, when I say Mitsa, I mean assets with uh, a few hundred millions in turnover that are mature enough uh, to be considered for LBO situations with a certain maturity and stability of cash flows. And LBO is the core uh, segment of private equity. So renewable energies would not be um, the most obvious segment to pick uh, uh, stories from. But of course, it's it's very interesting. And uh, I, I would like to work more into that. It's just that I don't see a lot happening yet. But I'm confident in 10 years' time, there will be a, a significant private equity activity there. Fabulous. We've got one more question. Um, does this course cover different methods of valuation for a startup like a DCF or a TO base? Uh, I don't know what TO is, but I suppose relative valuations. Uh, yes, we will look at both DCF, relative valuations, and alternative, but not for VC. I need to be very clear. This course is not about venture capital, but venture capital tends to be treated separately in entrepreneurship environments, right? So uh, private equity cl classes, uh, pretty much everywhere I've been, at least at Imperial College, um, is from a late stage to turn around with LBO in the middle, but uh, ignores a little bit the VC, which is a topic in itself, very different, uh, etc. But to answer the question, yes, we will look at various types of uh, variation methodology, but because it's not a course of variation, you will be invited to try them. It doesn't mean that you have to, and some students who have no particular interest in developing the financial skills, they skip a little bit that. I don't encourage skipping, okay? I really encourage you to put additional hours to better uh, your understanding of uh, valuation. And yes, if you want, and especially if you push yourself and work with a few classmates, uh, you can really practice company valuation, just not, not for startups. I wanna thank uh, Professor Kitten for going through the crux of this program with us. It's truly a fascinating course. I can see here from all of our participants that are interacting so far, everyone is quite keen to understand more uh, within the learning experience. Spread over 11 weeks and will include synchronous and asynchronous learning modalities. So you're gonna have your video lectures and we like to call that bite-sized learning. So you're gonna get information in five to seven minute segments of these video lectures that you'll then be able to digest, step back, uh, and really see things 
uh, in, a, in different perspectives by going into the discussion boards, interacting uh, with your peers. And that's a key takeaway here too, is that interaction. So you're going to really be interacting with people from different backgrounds, different areas of the world, years of experience and levels of experience. And that's a key takeaway here is that you're not only gonna learn this information, but you're gonna develop a professional peer network and connect with people all over the globe. So you'll be able to interact with uh, your peers um, on these topics, kind of deep dive on all those, uh, all of that information. You'll then, you know, be able to have interactive activities where you'll delve even deeper into these concepts and kind of play around with them. And that's where the case studies come in as well. Where you'll be able to get, you know, see hands-on real-world experiences, see what worked, see what didn't, and see how what the outcomes were. And you're going to have those live webinars as well with faculty and course leaders, and that will allow you to kind of have that uh, uh, synchronous. Uh, modality there. And again, you're going to always be supported both from an academic standpoint and from um, a back end standpoint. So we have a dedicated program support team that are going to be with you to answer any of those back end questions. But we've got, you know, a few key takeaways here is you're learning from uh, a leader in the industry, you've got that peer um, professional network that you're going to be building and growing and learning from. And you've also got your program certificate. So upon completion of the program, participants will be awarded that verified digital certificate by Imperial College Business School Executive Education. So you'll see here, this is an example of that certificate. You'll have uh, the seal of Imperial College Business School, your name, the title of the program, private equity, and the date of completion. You'll also have the signatures of the director and the dean. Now you can post this on your resume, on your LinkedIn uh, profile, it really uh, showcases your edge in the industry and can be utilized to help you take that next step. So this is that, that next uh, key takeaway here. So you've got that professional peer network and the program certificate to help you take that next step and really grow your knowledge base and expand your career and your movements forward. Uh, so with that, uh, so you'll see here a link. Now that link is going to be posted into the chat box and it will take you to a page if you follow it that looks very similar to the one you're seeing in front of you. Now, if you click that apply now button, it'll get you uh, to a page that will ask for your contact details. So your name, your phone number, and your email address. And that will allow us to get you connected with a program advisor. And like I said, we've got that dedicated team on the back end and they're here with us live right now. So if you've asked a question and you've received a response via text in the Q&A box, that's our program support, our program advisors. They're here with us right now live on the call to answer any of your questions relating to policy, logistics, and registration. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about flexible payment options or special group enrollment pricing, our program advisors are here to help. If you wanna know a little bit more about how this program, the live webinars, uh, all, of, all of the aspects of the uh, components of this program can fit into your time zone and how to make it work, our program advisors can help you. And if you've got a question on policy, what happens if I miss an assignment? How do I earn that certificate of complete? Our program advisors are there to help as well. Now, if you're not quite ready to enter in your contact details, we have also provided an email address. You'll see it here in the chat. It's imperial at emeritus.org. And you'll be able to send us an email. Let us know you're interested in the program and let us uh, allow you to take that next step in your career let us to a program advisor who'll guide you through from your first question to the beginning of the program through to the end. You are completely 100% supported from all aspects. And that's really the beauty of uh, an online learning environment. You're not encumbered by time and space. You're able to learn in your own. And with that, I'd love to introduce uh, back Professor Kitten. Thank you so much for being here with us till the end to answer our questions. I can see here we've got two already. Um, so we have one here, uh, Professor uh, Kitten. Yes. Hello, welcome back. Um, we have a question here on how in depth are the weekly modules in terms of content and how is each module for success? So I guess, can you, can you, how deep are you diving into these concepts during each of these modules? Are, are you going to touch on, on kind of generalities or are you gonna uh, do a little bit of a deep dive? It's all relative, okay? Uh, we advocate five to seven hours of uh, teaching, I mean, learning per week, that's the minimum. After that, the students are provided enough optional material that they could easily spend 40 hours a week. I don't think most students are able to invest that much, but some students may be able to allocate more time. And if they can put 15, 20 hours, then it will be in depth. 
if it is five to seven hours, obviously it cannot be in depth. That's an hour per day. Um, so that will remain a uh, general. But uh, the goal is to be general. Why? Because this is a course for managers, for executives. We are not, I am not training uh, people to become uh, an analyst in a private equity fund who knows how to model and value it. That's it. Um, I'm talking to people who have some exposure to business. They don't need to have any exposure to private equity, but to business, some responsibility, some career, etc. Um, we've had a couple of uh, participants that were just gradu graduating from university, but they had a, a very particular need. They didn't have perhaps a private equity course in their university, and they were going to join or to apply to a few private equity funds. And they wanted to have a general understanding to maximize uh, their chances rather than develop an expertise. Okay, So no, I'm not going to make you experts, uh, but I'm going to make you uh, very knowledgeable about all dimensions uh, of uh, private equity. Th th there's a difference. And you have the option individually to allocate as much time as you want to develop that more in depth and become real expert if you want. Fabulous. So maybe you can give an idea of um, if there are any prerequisites for this program. There's no prerequisite, but any form of experience of business, whether it is having had several years of experience, possibly with some major uh, responsibilities, will help. Having studied business would help as an alternative. If you have just graduated from something that is not business related and have zero experience of business, it's going to be difficult because you don't have any of the vocabulary that all your classmates will have. Uh, so you will have to work twice harder to catch up with them. But I don't think that the, all the applicants in general do have some form of experience here and there. So it's not a problem. So otherwise, there are no prerequisite. They are nice to have. Having been exposed to corporate finance is always very good because that's what is the most time consuming to learn it from scratch. Okay, so if you want to listen to company evaluation, I've never done it. Uh, it won't be done in the five hours you will invest every week. It has to be on top of it. Fabulous. Could you go uh, a little bit into um, how this program is set apart from others currently on offer? What kind of, what inspired you to develop it and what kind of sets it apart? Well, <laughs> I teach private equity at Columbia, Renmin, Beijing, uh, St. Petersburg, uh, London, and Pearl College, etc. So I, I could say this is a global approach, but I, I do not know exactly what others do. I mean, I have a couple of friends who teach private equity, and they are academics who are going to focus on something very specific. They are, they are great professors, but they will, for example, focus on the issues of the limited partner who is a, a dormant, let's say, or a passive investor and how you manage the conflict of interest with the general partners. This is extremely specific, but this is what they live for. And they can pass that to their students, um, but they might spend less time on many other important points. So uh, you ask me how my course differs from the other. To the extent I know, um, it differs from academic courses in the sense that it is based on lots of real experience and it is very diversified. Now, I'm sure there are some people in the world who uh, teach private equity uh, in a similar way, but that's it, not many because uh, you need to have good exposure to strategy, to finance, to operations, the people who typically have that, they are CEOs. So they have other things to do than teaching private equity. And uh, you would find that actually a few private equity teachers are former CEOs who are doing that as a change in life. Okay, I'm a bit different because I do it in parallel to being a partner in a strategy consultancy. Um, so yes, it will be more diverse and probably more based on real uh, experiences, personal experiences also. They wanted to learn more about the operational and financial aspects of private equity. Now, will this course benefit and will it help them uh, understand all of that? But the, the financial definitely, because we are going to do an LBO analysis, which is managing a huge modeling spreadsheet. We are going to do some standard, I mean, not advanced, but not that standard valuations of private equity situations. So 
that's purely financial. Operationally, we are not going to do a lot, okay, because this is something that is process-based and we can only show a little bit of it, but we cannot practice it unlike the financial side, which we can do. Um, so the strategy we can discuss in depth, and there's not much more to do than that. The finance we can discuss and practice. The operations, we can only line up what is important. Uh, you don't have a lot of, uh, I mean, there is no such thing as an operational private equity course, let's say. You could take uh, an operations course where you would be exposed to all the rules of uh, lean management, critical path, etc. Uh, but that's uh, completely out of our subject. But we'll out. discuss the, the real uh, issues that uh, uh, private equity investors have once they have invested in the company, yes. Fabulous. So we've got a question here. Would this course benefit someone working in the legal team of a fund manager in a law firm advising private equity firms? Uh, yes. Uh, something I've noticed is often not just the lawyers, but the accountants, the tax specialists who work in private equity, they tend to focus on their area, which is totally normal. But when they have a bit more understanding of what happens at the bank and uh, uh, commercial consultant slash level, um, they are better at targeting their services. There are also a little bit of synergies between the services provided by the various advisors. So if you are a legal advisor to a private equity transaction, you already work with the investment bankers. Okay, Often the investment bankers are hired to kind of coordinate everything. Um, so you would deal with the investment banker, but you have much less interaction with, for example, consultants like me. Um, so looking at uh, the various uh, roles of the people helping in the project, looking at the private equity issues outside of the legal ones uh, will make you a stronger provider of your own services. Could you um, maybe, regarding the case studies, because these are the hands-on experiences that people are going to be learning from, what, what inspired you to choose those specific businesses? Was it just that it was uh, a plethora of different industries or was there specific reasons for each case study? Yes, I select cases that, well, first have interesting components. Okay? We don't want to get bored to death when we look at a situation, uh, but uh, have uh, elements that are recognizable and uh, that uh, teach us something. So, I, I mean, I don't want to spoil it here, but uh, in one case study, for example, we will look at an unexpected uh, turn of events. In another one, we will look at the impact of uh, disruptive innovation that can kill a deal. In another one, we will look at a value driver that has nothing to do with uh, the valuation itself, but more with the geographical differences uh, between situations, etc. So there are small things that are a bit unique to certain of those case studies that show us something that could happen. Now, of course, each of them is special, is a bit different, etc. But the case studies are the result of years of testing lots of them and keeping the ones that uh, work. Oh, yeah. So we've got a, a question on the case studies. Uh, what will be the key learning components and takeaways uh, from them? Now, I know you touched on it a little bit if you wanted to... Sorry, the key learning of what? The learning components and the takeaways from the case studies. Uh, as I just said, it's uh, from... Uh... Uh, from putting your feet in the shoes of the people who are making decisions. So you are forced to think as if you were the manager who is involved in that transaction, just so that the brain is more likely to remember, to create connections um, when uh, it is, when you can visualize the situation as opposed to a very theoretical description on paper, yeah, that would be the synthesis of all the case studies of the world. So we want to, uh, to see a particular situation. We have to be careful not to generalize that situation to everything, of course not. But we look at general uh, learnings and then we look at a special case and somehow our brain uh, is so clever that it makes a difference between the two, but it also see the, the, the relationships. So that's how we learn. The takeaway is that our uh, exposure is both a theoretical one and one that is 
almost practical. I mean, of course, doing a case study is not exactly the same as uh, being thrown into the company for a year and having to deliver, but it's the closest thing that we can do in a few hours. So it's very practical learning. Um, maybe uh, I'm uh, too exposed to that, okay? Having done an MBA, having been teaching all over the world case studies uh, everywhere, and write, having written lots of case studies myself, uh, I take them for granted. So it, it, it's true. I, I, if you have done engineering classes and you have never seen a case study, that's a very business school type of thing. But I, I, I'm just... Uh, sharing that it works. It's a very close thing to the real experience. Fabulous. Um, so we have from Golan, would this course strengthen negotiations for an individual that represents a business that is selling to private equity? Uh, unfortunately, we do not have the time to have a role play. I dream of having some role plays, but they take easily uh, uh, three, four hours, uh, several hours in any case. Uh, and we would not know where to put that. That would be the best way to practice a little bit that. So, no, we will see in the case studies some situations where people negotiate, yes, but it's not the same as uh, practicing uh, it on our own. Would they maybe, because you have that LinkedIn group, you have them interacting with previous, um, you know, uh, participants of this program, would they maybe be able to interact with their peers? Oh, yes, practice? they could practice on their own as much as they want. I can, actually, they can use the, the canvas or the... The, the, the incendie uh, support uh, of the course, the one that they use to access the material, etc. This is used for individual exercises, can be used also for group exercises, and uh, either there or using LinkedIn or going on to a social network, um, they could play with such situations, definitely. If only uh, organizing a little brainstorming session with a large group on LinkedIn, that could be already very, very useful. We consider EMEA markets. What sector will be covered by this private equity training? Uh, mobility, real estate, M&A? Uh, I'm not <laughs> sure about the... Okay, so mobility, uh, I mean, this is a very, very specific segment of either consumer goods or transportation. So no, I don't think we have a particular case study that covers mobility. Real estate, there may be some elements of real estate in other situations, but we do not specifically uh, work on the real estate uh, uh, case. And M&A, uh, not sure about the question, private degree is a subset of M&A, so everything we do is M&A related, uh, both in terms of strategic intent, in terms of process, and in terms of value creation in the portfolio. Here, Professor Kitten, what specific factors are considered in the emerging markets module? Everything macro and microeconomic. The macroeconomic may be related to the state of the economy, to the political decisions, etc., and to the relationship of the country with the rest of the world. The microeconomic will include differences at the level of uh, financing, but also uh, adapting to local rules. We look at the cultural aspects. Um, we look at everything that within the country or in the exchange with other countries makes it different. And we look at that in various parts of the world. So we will look at, uh, I mean, people would say it's not the developing countries, but in private equity, to an extent, Japan <laughs> is developing. Uh, but we look at China, we look at India, we look at Brazil, we look at uh, a, a few different uh, places within the, the time we have, of course. So I hope this answered the question. Um so we've got another question here. Similarly, with the future of private equ equity, do we look at the sectors that private equity are targeting more prominently and the reasons for this? Healthcare. Yes, we, we, we look at, uh, for each segment of private equity, we look at what makes an investment attractive or not. And we also look at uh, where private equity invests by sector. So we can cross-check those two information and find that, uh, yes, indeed, Healthcare is very attractive uh, at the moment. It went from 5 to 10% of the M&A activity over the last five years. Um, technology is a very wide-ranging world, but the, the digit digitalization, for example, of all services is uh, something that uh, uh, is obviously there. But, you know, I mean, 20 years ago, we would have said that uh, uh, private equity invest in Internet. 
Uh, no, private equity invest in companies and force them to uh, develop a website. Okay, so we have something similar to that nowadays. So yes, we look at, at that. Uh, now, a general recommendation. If you decide to join this program, I have two uh, recommendations. The first one is uh, in our live sessions with me or with the tutor to have your cameras on. Okay, This is extremely important to make it a true class. I, I promise you we can have the same quality of interaction online than in class if we have our cameras on. Uh, so we can see each other, and not just between you and me, but between yourselves. So the first thing. And the second, just repeating uh, the value of trying to work in team with one, two, three other participants, um, which you can do. It's just your initiative. We, we recommend and we support it, but we cannot force you, but you get much more out of that. Fabulous. Well, this is truly a fascinating course, uh, Professor Kitten. We've got so much engagement here and lots of questions, really. Uh, I'm just wondering if you want to leave our participants with any words of wisdom or final thoughts. I know you gave some recommendations, but maybe some words of wisdom as they move forward through their uh, private equity um, experience and, and learning and knowledge from it. No, so it is a word of wisdom, but when I started my career, nobody, I mean, few people knew what private equity was, especially uh, in Europe, which was lagging behind the U.S., uh, today, everybody has heard of private equity, but moreover, everyone is or will be soon exposed to a private equity situation. Uh, and I cannot count now my friends who have been working in companies that were bought. Sometimes they lost their jobs. Sometimes they got an opportunity to get a huge boost in their career. Uh, in any case, it's disruptive. Okay, And being more prepared... Uh, makes you more likely to get something positive out of it. Uh, it can be difficult experience in a way, but it can be transformed into a re rewarding one. So that's the value of a course like that, to inform you, to prepare you, to, 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 to make sure that you will know your options better. I'd love to extend a big uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, and good day to all of our participants here from around the globe. And a big thank you again to Professor Kitten for being here with us. Thank you so much.